Hey, what's up, Ron here. Thank you for joining me in today's video. Today's a little different. Uh, I wanna share with you three portrait painting processes. And the reason is I have been really uh, honing in on where I'm weak in my watercolor skills, quite frankly. And the subject at which I'm the weakest is probably portraits. And the technique I'm weakest at is smooth transitions and getting gradual changes and really controlling the finer aspects of watercolor when it comes to larger shapes as opposed to almost big scenes with multiple elements where you can kind of get away with working in smaller sections past a certain point. Um, so I want to work on my weaknesses and one of the main things that I'm working on in these three portraits is my ability to use wetter washes. Now that doesn't take, you know, being a genius, um, all it takes is actually doing it. And what I notice you'll see is a gradual progression where this is the first one. And as light as you see this wash, this is not light enough. I should start for this specific experiment lighter, um, which is why I'm showing you three processes. The first one was a failure in the simplest, uh, in the simplest meaning of the word that is just, I did not follow the actual plan I wanted to follow. This is way too strong. Um, and the reason I want to start lighter is, okay, so I've been watching a lot of portrait painting um, processes on YouTube um, by people who are amazing at it. So you'll have guys like uh, Missile Boo and uh, Jung Sung Hung and a bunch of people that are just spectacular. And one of the things I noticed, I would really love to close that gap in my skill. One of the things I noticed is how wetter they were working in the beginning, uh, which allows them a bit more time. And the trade-off is working in multiple layers. Now, I shied away for the longest time from using multiple layers because it felt to me very often overworked and it didn't look fresh to me. But the thing was, the people I saw using that, that method, it was their way of working that led to non-fresh results. It wasn't the technique of using multiple layers. Um, and the, the opposite, the multiple layers, thinner washes really allows for a very fresh result if you know what you're doing. And that's the thing I'm trying to do now. And, and you know very well if you've been at it for a couple of years or more, uh, whenever you try doing things differently, different from the way you're used to, uh, you produce significantly inferior results. That will often happen. You'll get a break once in a while and that'll be kind of a, a starting path for improvement. Um, so what you're seeing now is the result of that. It's much more inferior, much weird work. Now for the first portrait, I'm using this, this picture you see here and um, what I'm doing is that you saw me sketch it freehand very quickly, didn't care much about the details. I cared more about the painting process. But after this one, you'll see me doing another portrait uh, where I actually paint it, um, sketch it more accurately off camera and then paint it a little more carefully black and white because I figured, okay, I got to get rid of color here for a second because it's overwhelming to me. Uh, but in any case, here is the, the end result of my first wash. This is way too strong. This was not the goal. This is not how uh, I saw other people doing it and it's not how I want to do experiment with it. Uh, so essentially you're seeing a bit of a screw up here. Now, one thing to take for, in addition, I would say is even when I'm learning from other people, I'm not really following their artistic way of doing things. It's more like I'm looking at the basic techniques and the result in watercolor. I'm looking at the results they're getting from a pure standpoint of how much water, how much paint, and how can I recreate that. So I'm not attempting to imitate anyone's style. I'm not attempting to follow how someone else does things because I know that's a dead end. It never works. It never really works. You have to uh, feed it through your own filter and whatever's left is what's relevant. But on a pure mechanical standpoint. They're doing things much better than me and I kind of am tired of uh, compromising on that. Um, and so I really want to crack this case. Uh, so here's another wash. That one is still too strong. You see, I, and that's the thing, you know, how I got to this was um, I started looking for themes in other people's paintings that really made their portraits sing. And I kept noticing that a recurring theme was a lot of water 
much wetter washes that then allow you so much more time to react and to work with what's going on on paper. Um, uh, the rest is uh, is um, what you'd call a flourish, maybe. It's just a, a neat, cool effect where, you know, the, the edges blend and all sorts of different things that, that these artists utilize that, uh, that look great, right? But that's not the core of what makes it look so beautiful. The core is the wonderful uh, control of the washes. Uh, as well as a almost machine-like ability to match colors, which I'm not trying to do at all. Um, I, I don't even tr attempt it here and in the next examples. I'm kind of going with what I feel, but I know I'm not following the colors I see. Um, that would be very hard for me to do in addition to trying a different approach with the washes. So you see this is the, the couple of less stages. This one's going to be done soon, and I will show you the end result. Again, looks nothing like the original photo in terms of the drawing. It was very quick. Uh, I'm actually going to attempt to fix one mistake. Her left cheek, that's to our left, it's actually her right, is a little too fat. So I'm trying to cut into that with some negative painting here, and hopefully I will make it look a little better. But, you know, the, again, the sketch was very quick. Uh, it wasn't really that good. Uh, and based on that, here's the final result. And of course, there's a lot to improve. So let's do another attempt upon this one. This time, I'm trying to be a little more um, uh, disciplined and actually, and you know, disciplined in a good way. I, I, I don't need to really discipline myself in any way. But in this example, I'm trying to be more disciplined and, and congruent with the exper experiment. Uh, and so I'm using much wetter washes. This is a little closer to what I had in mind. Uh, and I also turned it black and white, which makes me much faster and it makes it much easier to work with. And already it looks kind of nice. You know, I left a couple of highlights behind, played around with the edges to make sure that it's smooth wherever I want it to be. Uh, and here we go with the next wash. Now this is where I'm starting uh, to fall off uh, the path again. Uh, so f so far it's great. This is it's nice. It's fairly light. But then I get greedy again, and I kind of say, okay, what will happen if I now start introducing uh, the dark wash for the hair right next to this one? Not not a, mis a mistake. Nothing is a mistake, right? Nothing is incorrect. Nothing is wrong. But it's about what I'm trying to achieve here. What I'm trying to achieve here is a very smooth wash. And here you see I, I jumped ahead a bit. Uh, it really is dark, it's strong, and what's the byproduct of that? Lack of flow, not enough time to allow me to really fine tune the edges. Um, now, uh, this is, so you've seen me in the past, you know, working on core shadows, dividing the, the portrait into light and dark, and doing it quite successfully. The difference is that now I'm trying to do it a different way, more fine tuned, more accurate, uh, as opposed to merging a bunch of shapes together. I'm trying to actually paint it as close to as I see it, um, which is why I'm doing this experiment, which is why I'm getting different results. Okay, I can uh, fall back to my way of doing things, but the reality is when I look at my results, I'm unhappy. L look at the lack of flow here. As much as I tr thought I tried, look at the lack of flow here. That's a byproduct of me um, being unaware of something. What's that thing? Uh, the fact that I'm not using enough water. And why am I using uh, not enough water? That's how I arrived to this conclusion. I asked myself, what stops me from producing these magnificent paintings that I'm seeing when it comes to portraits? The answer was, I'm in a hurry. I'm in a hurry for that final result. So I jump to a dark value. And that's okay. You know, if you want to go fully a la prima, you want to get the right value immediately, but I, I felt like I'm not getting the result I wanted. Um, and so, yeah, you see now this one is built a little more slowly. So there is a bit of improvement compared to the last one. But notice once again how dark I'm going here. How, um, how again, a bit of a um, hunger for getting that end result. Uh, that kind of makes me go very dark there where I would have gone much, I would have done much better with going with more lighter washes in a way um, that will enable me to look at the nuances of the shadows with enough time, right? To make the shadows next to the nose a little darker, which now I have to do really fast. So you see I'm doing wet and wet here. I'm going to darken some of the areas that are just gently darker under the uh, the eyebrow, under the eyebrow, around the eye, the pupil, the next to the nose, right? It's these things that I would love to get with a bit more of a nuanced feel to them. Uh, with a little more of a finesse 
uh, to them and that I kind of uh, missed because I have to work so fast here, so fast because uh, my wash is just not wet enough. And I kept bouncing back and forth between these other artists and my videos and that was the number one thing that popped to me was I am just not allowing myself enough time. Um, again, it's all a matter of choice. Want to go more direct, more El Prima, more bold, that's great. But I felt like I'm, I stopped getting the results I wanted with that approach. Uh, so this is what you see me here. Now, notice there's still a little bit of lack of flow and the bottom part of this is too light. So what I'm gonna do is one final wash. In a second, you'll see I'm lifting. Look at this, this is actually a nice highlight to lift. Um, and then a shadow next to it. So what I'm actually gonna do here is do one last wash. It's not meant to be very dark. It's meant to just be a thin, unified wash. You'll see that in a second once I finish with the, uh, her right eye that's to our left. And look at how much context it provides and that's really nice. Same uh, with the adding a background. That's gonna add a lot of um, um, a lot of context to the to the lights. Uh, but in any case, yeah, there are a couple of details here, the eyebrow. Um, but, but it still feels a little uneven and the bottom is lacking. The best solution I found, and I don't know why my camera went crazy here, uh, a bit of background. The best solution I found was let's do one last wash. Uh, it covers the whole thing up. By the way, I messed up where the hair begins. It should begin closer to the ear. So it looks like she has a tiny neck. Sorry about that. You'll see that in a second. Uh, but in any case, this is a thin wash. I know it looks dark, it's just because it's super wet. Uh, I mixed a lot of it in advance. All it has to do is cover everything and make it a little more flowy because it didn't flow enough. Uh, so I'm not doing anything fancy here, just covering the whole thing up. And in a second or two, you will get to see the final result. I used this opportunity to darken some areas that need darkening, of course. But uh, yeah, you'll see the end result actually looks much better in the scan than uh, on the video. Uh, but yeah, here it is. And now, after I figured, okay, I'm still not going light enough, I finally managed to at least go light enough in this third attempt. Now, uh, honestly, I got tired in the middle and wanted to take a break, so I didn't even finish this process, and I don't know even if I will, because uh, I'm not used to working this way, and I kind of want to reassess my direction. So this process is maybe 70% done, <coughs> and I run through most of it, because I don't want this video to get too long. But um, Started with the background, moved on to the hair, uh, and from the hair I'm gonna move to the face. And that is where I'm gonna go super light, and that's the the thing I was trying to achieve. But before that, we will do some neat manipulation on the hair, kind of inspired by uh, Misulbu, um, trying to push some darks there. I don't even have a reference for this; it was a random photo off Pinterest, I think. Um, uh, so I'm trying to render at least some of the hair, show some of its shapes by darkening and lifting and uh, adding a few hairs here and there for uh, for small details you'll see. Just to give me a, a nice framework while it still blends with the blue background. I've seen a lot of these artists do that. Um, and once I'm kind of happy with that, I can move on to the face. Look at this wash, okay? This is how I intended to do things from the very first attempt. That was the thing I was actually uh, wanting to try out. Uh, and I just, it, it just shows you how stuck one can be in their own habits. Uh, I knew what I wanted to achieve, and yet I just didn't do it. Uh, even some of the colors here, I lost a lot of the colorfulness I wanted. I went straight to the muted colors, which is fine. You know, I'm still, uh, I'm thinking more in terms of uh, washes and values than colors. But, you know, if anything, you know, if, if I use colors, then might as well use the correct colors, and I kind of lost that as well. Um, but you'll see just some of the highlights of this process anyway. Uh, this is fully dry, doing another wash. Now it looks a little nicer, the red and the colors start to come to life a bit more. Um, that was the sort of process I aimed for. Uh, I'm not sure, I, I'm so not accustomed to it. So the, the end result is smooth to some extent and not really. Uh, to some extent. Uh, so you'll see some of the shapes I'm trying to get in, especially later on when I start to do some shading. Uh, they just feel a little awkward because, I'm again, I'm not used to working this way. And that's what happens uh, when you're not used to, you know, the nose is too thin, looks a little Michael Jackson-y, honestly, and I didn't want that at all. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, you'll see some nice manipulation here uh, with uh, a value that is a little stronger but still light enough for me. 
I'm uh, going to blend this, uh, smoothen out the edge there on the left, and then gradually start darkening under the nose and try and do that in one go, which I think is, again, that's the whole, the whole idea here. Thinner washes that allow me enough time that lead to accurate results that can be painted in one go locally. Um, and, and now I have it in my head, whenever I start a new shape, start very wet on it uh, to give me time to get the flow, to get everything I want. Um, and this is sort of the first step, right? This, this, uh, these three processes are me just taking the first few steps to painting a little differently. I'm not saying it's going to change everything I paint, but just for portraits and smooth, gradual transitions, especially softer portraits, the kind of scenes that I've avoided painting mostly because they're just, I find them very hard to paint. Um, I, I just said enough of that. I'm not going to let that continue. Uh, I will start tackling these weird, um, almost um, abstract, smooth transitions that are a great challenge. Uh, I don't want to run away from them anymore. Um, I, I don't even think my final goal is to be able to paint portraits like some of the artists uh, I mentioned. I think I want that skill set to be reincorporated into everything I'm doing. Uh, so not just the portraits, but, you know, the cars, the cityscapes, the landscapes, everything. It's, it's relevant to everything, really. Uh, and for some reason, with portraits in particular, it's so hard for me to summon that. Uh, it's a combination of patience... Uh, habits, uh, technique, you know, a lot of small things that together just lead to, you know, the bottom line, not the result I want. Um, and I'm kind of uh, tired of being frustrated with that. Um, so, uh, and, and that's because I was trying to do a lot of um, portraits over the last couple of days and I was re, uh, I re-met this side that is still really uh, incomplete and um, yeah. And, and I've painted some great portraits before, uh, and I don't know to explain exactly what's the difference, but th there is a difference. There is a gap, a pure gap in technique, a pure gap in habits that I'm wishing to close up, which is why I did these three portraits, uh, which is why I did this video. And I hope um, you find it maybe useful or inspiring in some way. Uh, I do want to thank you for watching. And I do want to thank everyone who supports me over on Patreon. I really, really appreciate it. You allow me to uh, do this for a living, which is just incredible. And I'm grateful every single day. Uh, and with that, we'll wrap it up. And I will see you in the next video. So until then, take care.